the cube comes in a, in a small box like this you undo it here take the top off remove this there's a screw on the front here that you take out you unscrew with the allen wrench that you come to the kit you unscrew this and then after you get it undone it will come out and goes in your little box here so everything is ready to go this way want to point out some of the details on the cube first of all the small knife that you can see here can be rotated a number of times around to make sure that it is set up right so this one is set at zero is a brand new one and the thickness of the tip is determined here the length of the throw how far back the reed will go you can see that a little bit better if I put a reed in here. Oh, I should mention one other thing. This normally comes tied down with this insert in here. And you have to unhook it, pull this out to fit the reed, and then tighten it down. So we put the reed in. Those little jaws hold the reed, keep it from slipping, and you'll notice that the reed is moved in parallel. You can see how these two units move back and forth. So we put the reed in like that and lay this down on it. Now we start very quickly, easily. It's very difficult when you first start off to hold this up. I shouldn't say it's difficult to hold it up. It's very important to hold it up. It's difficult if you don't. It will gouge the cane. After you get it to a certain point, you can relax, loose it gradually, and then begin to move the cane. This is just a little bit. They say about one-eighth. I sometimes use just a sixteenth. Just to make sure it's very smooth, straight. moving it very little. It looks like I'm moving it pretty fast, but once you get used to it, it's not difficult at all. And all I'm doing is just a working my way back across the reed so it goes from one side middle to one side back to the other side and back to the center. That way you're getting two passes on each part. So if you miss anything at all it will be taken care of. Nice thing about this, you loosen the angle here, hold the reeds, the little screw, and simply take and move the reed, retighten it, and do the same gouging process on this side. As I said, this is a a new machine when they come in they sometimes have a long scrape I think you can maybe see it there it's a long scrape here but not as long as we sometimes use so we adjust the machine for the American scrape to make a medium strength reed with a little bit of cane left in it we come back to the center we work across to the tip the other side, go back to the center, and we should have a profiled reed.
said, we're going to do another read here and see if we can do this. I moved the, no the notch up to two, and we've shortened a little bit the uh, tip. And of course, that's going to make the read play harder, but it also gives us more work cane to work with to make the read the way we want it. And as I said, I prefer more out of the back so we, I can do more sides and create a stiffer spine. Looks like I'm moving very fast, but um, once you get used to it, it's a lot easier to do it. Of course, we do a lot of reads here, so we don't have a problem getting used to it. I'm going to rotate back to the center. Turn the read over. Push, turn it. Tighten it back down. And profile the second side. that that crow is a lot stiffer. Now, if that's a little bit too hard, you can adjust this back, back up to the number one position. And because I did the tip and the back at the same time, I got it a little tougher than I wanted to. So all I'm going to do is just put that back in after moving the back strength, which lifts it up and down. So it just allows to take more out. And we'll take this out. And I can move faster now because I've already got the whole profile done. And all we're doing now is finishing it up a little bit. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's just very little right here. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but just very little comes off. Now we're going to take and turn the reed, tighten it back up, center it again. and do the second side. This is all I'm going to just take a little bit out of the back like you would. Now, if you prefer, you could do it with your knife. I'm just trying to make sure I get this read where it'll actually, the, the profile will it'll work all the time. If you want to, you can put a plaque in and work your knife right here to take those sides out, which is what I like to do a little more work with my knife than with the others. You can see I'm playing a little harder and it's raised the pitch. Now, I wanna show you that the biggest advantage and like all advantages, if you don't follow it slowly and do it well, it can become a problem for you. Because it's set up, you probably will not have to worry about the length of the reed and the crown of the back. A lot of people don't think about this, but if you get this too far back, the back of the reed gets soft. The same as if you get it too far back with just scraping it. So I prefer to leave it a little longer here and take a little bit less out of the back and just define it well 
and then take the knife and adjust this for what the reed needs or am I playing whatever I'm playing that week needed more for lows more highs and all of that now this is where it can get very tricky when we send these out we send a three by five card with it acknowledging what numbers each unit is on the length the length of the scrape, the length of the tip, the back, how much is taken out of it, and even the amount of up and down to take the tip thinner here. We mark all of that so you have a place to go to if you get caught up. First time I got one of these machines, I just didn't think about that. Got it? Started adjusting and pretty soon I had it all out of kilter. It was just nothing worked. And so I had to take everything back to zero and gradually start working to where I could get it down. And it, you, if you can think about it, instead of trying to make big big adjustments, instead of going from one zero to four, I go zero to one, zero to two. Here, I may even go in half numbers. And you, you'll have a little thing on this gauge that shows you which way is short uh, so, uh, smaller smaller numbers and higher numbers to get a thinner or thicker tip now this adjustment here adjusts only the tip and of course since it's affecting the whole knife it will take a little bit maybe out of the back and a little bit more but you can adjust again the back by adjusting it up and down the hard part is to when how much do you get the tip you put the allen wrench in here and you turn it and that adjusts sorry that down here this is what you can do this is the tip shows the tip angle here i turn this and i'll move this back and forth now if i want to change the shape or the length of the scrape this is a set screw so here we're going to take the set screw and loosen it Turn the rod here and move the length of where the scraping starts. So you have two areas that you have to balance for the back. So, but the advantage is, is if you want to do just one, you can do it and then you can check the other. You can move them back and forth. You can always go back to where the numbers are set up to begin with. Okay, the other area that is sometimes a, a, can be a problem from some things. Um, I think this tends because some people will use a more curved cane, some a flatter cane, some wider, and some narrower. When you start doing that, the machine is set up for an American scrape, but it may take more off one side or the other depending upon if there's cane down or whatever. It's a narrower cane and less circumference. This area right here is the very tricky part and I'll put links to this is in the manual there's two manuals on there about this and it works very well you can go through it and refer to it on along there there is a manual for this I downloaded it I will find the link and put it in Facebook so you have it I want to remind you on everything that you do pretty consistently is like when you want to do the back there is a set screw here so you have to undo that set screw, make this screw even. When you finish it, tighten it back. You want to tighten this. If you think about a curve, the curve here, as you move that curve sideways or one way or the other, you notice that the Allen wrench goes lower. And over here, it'd be higher. If I move it this way, it's as lower. That same distance is higher. So this is on a curve here, going here. So if for some reason the reed is not centered well, like this one is, and takes more out of one or the other. And what I will do is I will take a reed and find a place to measure on that reed on one side and get the measurement. That's at 0.15 move it over to the other side about this try to judge the same place and you notice that it's about 116 now 
So I'm trying to get that tip even as I can where I can measure it. That'll usually ensure the back of this is measured. If it doesn't, you can loosen small Allen wrench here, loosen the set screw, and then you turn this screw. Now, because you're moving the whole profile, I like to set the small side of the end screw in for the Allen wrench into the screw so that I can see whether it's where it's at. And I'll make motions as little as this at a time. And you, if you want to, you can put your finger in here if you forget which way it's going. To the left pulls it, to the right pushes it, or moves the blade to, to the other side. You can put this in, put your finger here, and as you turn it, you can feel the pressure moving one way or the other. So that's a good backstop on it. This will allow you to move this entire profile, and therefore if one side is thinner or thicker, you simply move the profile so that if it's thicker on this side, I'm going to pull the profile so the curve is a is lot further down on the curve. It'll lower it on the outside here and raise it on the inside here. But remember, your reed's going in backwards. So you have to adjust this in relationship to this. So if it's thinner here, after it's thinner over here, I'm going to push this towards the reed and back and forth. The tutorial that has, has on that is very simple about it, and it does mention the fact that it takes very little to move it, so I, I, sometimes I didn't put this in, I'd go, mm, I'd just crank it all a quarter of a way all the way around like this, way too much. Adjust it a little at a time, check the reed, and adjust the tip. When you think you're getting close, do a new read because the read that was there, if it's too much off to begin with, can't even out because it's already taking it out of here. So then you just work on that. Again, when you finish, remember to put this back in and tighten it down. Now, it will tighten it for all the way is set up on everything in there. So remember, this is the back. The darker and the higher the numbers in the dark side make the back heavier. The white makes the reed lighter. The length, if you want to lengthen it, loosen the set screw, turn this to the left or the right, whether you want to shorten it or lengthen it. You can see the number against the edge of the row, row right here. The tip of the reed, if you want it thinner, you can turn this little knob right here. That's it now, point two. If I want it thinner, I'd put just under two. If I want it thicker, I want to put it back up here. Don't move this one very much at a time because if you do, you could actually overreact and run the metal to metal in here and run one part of the knife and you'd have to change it. And so you want to do that where you're not taking too much out. Normally, I try to set the read where it's at point 12. Seems to work pretty good. 15 if you want to leave a little bit more on the sides of the tip so you can work on the center of the heart and the tip. So I hope that helps a little bit. If you have questions, you can just email me at richard at rrath, richardrath.com. I'll try to help you, and we'll put this on Facebook so that you can look at it. Have a great day.